the maze on the bus go? No. Oh. That might be the most accurate thing she's ever said. The maze on the bus go no. <laughs> Hi YouTube, so I am filming this video from my daughter May's room. She just woke up from a nap. Do you want to come say hi? Um. Come here. You say hi guys? Um. So I thought I would film kind of the second part to my video about extended breastfeeding. The first part was about why it's awesome, why if, it, if you want to do it, that it's something that you should do. This part is about the hardships of extended breastfeeding. Because it can be hard sometimes too, huh? Yeah, yeah it can be really tough. Um, so May is 21 months and a couple of days. And that means, you know, she's getting really close to two. You're almost two, aren't you? So we are still breastfeeding. We have cut it down significantly. This is my mindset on extended breastfeeding. Breastfeeding to a year, I think, is wonderful. I think it should be everyone's goal if they choose to breastfeed and, and something that you should really work and strive towards. I think that after one, it needs to be something that everybody still wants to do. Yeah. So, right, May? Everybody needs to want to breastfeed. So that means you and baby, oops, you and baby, why don't you go read a book? You and baby should both want to be breastfeeding after one. If at any point that relationship is not mutually agreed upon, meaning one party does not want to breastfeed, that's when it's time for you to think about weaning or think about changing your mindset on breastfeeding. So. We have gotten up until this point just about where we both were really still enjoying breastfeeding and in the last month, two months, it's been something that I don't like anymore as much. I don't hate it, I don't dread it, I don't have an aversion to it, but I just, I'm ready to go ahead and start weaning. So while May, are you looking outside for snow? We had snow yesterday, but it's all melted now. May is someone who would still very much like to continue breastfeeding quite often. Our relationship is no longer mutually agreeable. I am not wanting to continue to breastfeed, so we are working slowly on weaning, and I will do a video on that once we have a better handle on it. But yeah, so this is a video about things that have been difficult for us and for my friends with extended breastfeeding. So weaning is something that is a lot more difficult if you are extended breastfeeding and not planning on letting your child wean by yourself or, or if you're the one who ends up weaning them. Um, when you're weaning an infant or a one-year-old, I would think it would be easier, especially around that time. There seem to be a lot of nursing strikes and you can actually use a nursing strike to wean, whereas when they get older, your nursing strikes will be less prevalent. Again, this has been my experience with May. She had a nursing strike at like 10 months and I think I totally could have just stopped nursing her and she would have been okay. But now that we're still, you know, another year plus past that, it's not going to be as easy for me to nurse her. Something else that I think is really difficult about extended breastfeeding, and again this has been my experience, is that mom is the number one parent all the time because you have the thing that can comfort your child most easily. I know my husband does great with her when I'm not here, but it is more of a struggle for him than it is for me because I have nanas, which is what May calls breastfeeding. And she calls my breasts. Um, and so that is really difficult to always be the number one parent all the time, the one that your child almost constantly wants because you have the thing that helps to comfort them. That can be really, really difficult. Something else that I think can be really difficult with extended breastfeeding is just breastfeeding in public. My supply is lower because May is not nursing as much as a newborn. She's taking other liquids and other solids. So she really likes to switch back and forth between my breasts quite often during our breastfeeding relationship you know, every time we breastfeed. And that's really difficult to do in public while keeping yourself at least mildly modest and not drawing attention to yourself. When your child pops off every 30 seconds asking for the other side and wants to keep going back and forth, it's just, it's, it's more difficult for sure. <laughs> okay, we're all done. So something else that can be really difficult with extended breastfeeding that you guys literally just witnessed um, was May pulling my shirt all the time and she will reach down my shirt and, and pull my breasts out and it's just horrible and now she's back there climbing on the crib like a crazy. Get down please. That's really difficult. Um, when I want to front carry her, that can be really difficult because she is always trying to get into my shirt. 
Um, crying and asking for it in public can be really difficult. Um, and then teeth care. Something else that you really want to think about, especially if you're still breastfeeding overnight, is teeth care. So while breast milk, you know, isn't much of an issue when they're babies and they only have a few teeth as they get older and they're eating more starches and sugars and then those are sitting on your teeth and they're breastfeeding, it can be a really big issue where kids are getting cavities and stuff. So something else to think about. Now we don't personally still nurse at night. What are you going to go do? Makeup. Makeup? <clears throat> personally breastfeed at night still, but uh, for people that do, I think that that can be a real concern with extended breastfeeding. It's just dental hygiene. So I guess my point is extended breastfeeding, like anything else in parenthood, isn't all flowers and roses and beautiful, wonderful stuff. It's a great thing to do if you want to do it. And if you don't want to do it, that's okay too. Um, so without further ado, my child has left the building. I'm going to go follow her. Thanks so much for watching guys. Bye.